welcome back. The show is called Brand Equity and I'm Tanali Krishna. Namika and Burl Group's production arm, Kraft, has grand ambitions of taking on independent production giants. Slated to be launched across 23 markets worldwide, Kraft has been created to ensure a consolidated offering that is global in nature, but at the same time, highly local. WPP did the same a while ago with Hogarth as its free media operation offering. What's the real reason that most holding companies are now looking seriously at production services and how will this impact local production houses, if at all? Well, I caught up with the Kraft Global CEO to quiz him on just that. Take it away. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe that uh, Kraft is uh, your brainchild and uh, I believe you went and pitched it to uh, McCann World Group to actually start this uh, global production company of sorts. So, so why is this a good idea? What's the problem with the current structure? Well, the current structure is, is costly in many cases and it's also quite siloed where you don't need to have proximity of the execution in the same market that the creative idea has. And this is really the big idea that's changed over the last, say, 10 years. You can actually be an independent supplier, and then you put those independent suppliers in lower-cost markets. It's a much more compelling commercial model. But you think independent production houses are not doing that at the moment? Some of them are. Some of them are. But a lot of independent production houses start in one market. So they would start in particularly a higher price market, like a London or a New York, and then they struggle to have a global presence. So their big plays was to consolidate everything into one market and try to create volume in that one market. That works for some clients, but most clients then need local market insight and local market knowledge. So they struggle with the local market. You know, McCannville Group is not the only uh, agency that has looked into, you know, actually creating a dedicated unit, a production unit, so to speak. I mean, we have, uh, you know, WPC that's also done Hogarth, acquired Hogarth for the same purpose. Uh, you know, we. Uh, you know, players like you uh, coming along, how do you think, uh, and you know, with advertising agencies getting into full-time production, how do you think this will change the dynamics of uh, the industry? I think the independents will struggle more and more because at the end of the day, the clients still hire agencies to do the creative work. Sure. So we always try to maintain a close alliance with our McCann and World Group partners mm -hmm to execute on their clients first because then we have an understanding of the creative product. So how does it work? You're going to target all of McCann's clients first? Of course we're talking to them first, mm -hmm. but then we'll quickly talk to uh, any a company that has a global adaptation. So it doesn't matter if it's part of the IPG group? It doesn't matter, no. Uh, how has that, have you had any conversations outside of the IPG group with clients and how willing are they to actually partner with you considering you will be uh, you are a rival. Well, other agencies won't necessarily contact us if they've got a similar similar offering, obviously. But a lot of times now, client led by procurement initiatives are looking at this and saying, you know, we're quite happy to hire that agency to do our creative. So you don't think the call is coming from the client? The call is coming from the client. So that, makes, that, that that's a very interesting statement to make. So the call is coming from the client, saying that, you know, you might be my agent, A is my agency, but I want for instance, craft through my execution, and they're taking that call. What you're essentially saying is that these days, creative agencies don't even have the power to choose who the production house is. Correct. Are. That's what's happening most times. Really? Yes. So that's really a diminishing, uh, you know, uh, slowly and steadily we see that the power that the once upon a time creative agencies enjoyed is slowly coming down. Clients are focusing them on what they do best. And it's a space that we have no intention of getting into. I'm not trying to come up with new brand ideas or new campaign platforms. That's not what I'm designed to do. Do you think, this is a very, very awkward question to be asking, but do you think the reason for clients to go directly to production houses and take a call on who will be the production house essentially stems from the fact uh, that if it was the agency's call, then the whole kickback that was taking place and is probably still taking place is kept at base. There's a bit of that in the past, yeah. The, the, the kickbacks are, are long gone uh, um, from, from the issue. But yeah, I would say it probably started from that, a sort of a suspect that the agency was really making uh, much more than they, than clients thought that they should. Um, but it's also complexities come into this as, as well. So 
we're now clients of the ability to do one or two global campaigns and have that brand be truly global. And I think that demand has increased. So what it used to be quite silo where you may have ran regional or country level campaigns had a lot of duplicity in the marketplace. They were repeating work and they realized the impact that they were getting at, the return that they were getting at, wasn't substantiating the amount of work that they were creating and the cost they were putting into it. Tell me, with, you know, uh, production coming into as another big vertical within the uh, the advertising gamut of services, right. uh, how does this actually impact revenues of the agency? From a revenue standpoint, if you, again, start with what the studios were producing or what the, if you would put a revenue uh, number against their in-house studios, this could quadruple that by basically not only adding, uh, linking those studios to other studios uh, and creating hubs, so you're creating scale and volume in particularly lower cost markets, so they would benefit extreme from that, like, like India is for us, but also opening up, so you're sort of opening up another door to that studio to create revenue streams uh, um, separate from what is coming from the agency that they're associated with. How would you uh, evaluate your arrival in Hogarth? Uh, well, Hogarth, you know, started as a very London-centric approach. So, and they, uh, because of the very nature, they built a very large factory in, in London, which is, for me, I would consider a very high-priced marketplace. And we built a much more client-centric approach so I don't have a global headquarters. I don't even have regional headquarters to craft. So the 20 plus markets that you mentioned are all equal. So for every single client engagement that I get into, I piece together the right markets for that engagement. So if the client is based in, in Mumbai, then Mumbai is my global headquarters for that particular client and I'll link other markets to it. And that's a competitive advantage for me that I know the likes of Hogarth and others would, would struggle to, to do so. Thank you so much, Pat. Truly a pleasure. Thank to you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, on that note, we're heading into a quick break. But on the other side, we have the Chief Technology Officer of Razorface, who is waiting to share some rather interesting digital case studies with you. Stay with us.